Despite AAA games trying to make $70 games a thing, services like Game Pass, Steam sales and free-to-play games mean that gaming can be quite a cheap hobby if you want it to be. Well, unless you want your characters in your free-to-play game to wear hats, in which case you're on your own. However, if you're a preposterously wealthy oligarch who dresses like Mr. Monopoly and lights their cigars with $100 bills, you might be looking for a way to make your favourite hobby even more expensive. To which we say, can we borrow one of those $100 bills? Also, check out these seven ridiculously expensive gaming accessories for if you want to waste your money in a more video gamey way. Enjoy! Italian luxury fashion house Gucci turned 100 years old in 2021, it celebrated jointly with Microsoft's gaming brand Xbox, which turned 20 in the same year. And like a 20-year-old celebrating its birthday with an unrelated 100-year-old, it was awkward and weird. The two brands marked the occasion with a designer collaboration in the shape of a special piece of the luxury monogrammed luggage Gucci is famous for, of the kind Ryan Gosling might drive to the beach. How much swimwear does one man need? This commemorative gaming iteration of the iconic Gucci suitcase, made even more tasteful by having Xbox emblazoned across the side, was designed for hauling your Xbox Series X around the world, I guess is what the world's richest people are doing, instead of playing it at home on their sofa. This custom Gucci hard case might cost a chunky $10,000, but when you consider that they threw in two Gucci striped wireless controllers and a $500 Xbox Series X laser etched with the Gucci monogram print, it's still a massive waste of money. Still, if you've got 10k to spare, then knock yourself out if you can track down one of the only 100 numbered sets of this limited edition collaboration. Or for the same price, you could buy 20 Xboxes and put one in each of your homes, one in your yacht, and then kick three or four down the stairs. Your choice. One of the main problems with VR games is people coming into the room while you're playing, redecorating it to look like a medieval castle, and then when you take the headset off, you think you've gone back in time. Just me? Okay, one of the other main problems in VR games is movement, because when you've got a VR headset on, you of course can't see anything in the real world, and as a result might find yourself bumping into walls, headbutting door frames, or shattering your knee on a coffee table while trying to dome some polygons in super hot VR. <laughs> Enter the lightly asked for and preposterously pricey Omni One VR Treadmill, a 4 foot wide by 5 foot long, 250 pound round treadmill that allows you to walk in any direction while playing VR games, without having to worry about wandering out through your front door and up a ramp into a frozen goods van where you get frozen solid and wake up on a meat packing facility conveyor belt heading towards a big whirling blade. Just me? For those worried about safety, the treadmill also comes with a vertical bar that holds a shoulder and waist strap, which has a controller positioned either side of it, and, we're told, lets players walk, run, and even jump in their VR games. Which all sounds cool if you can afford the hefty price tag of $2,595 plus shipping. That does include a Pico Neo 3 VR headset customized for the treadmill, but doesn't include your return airfare after you walk off the treadmill while playing, out of the house, and accidentally board a flight to Denmark. Just me? Man, I need to stop playing VR games. There's a famous quote in motorsport circles and it goes like this. How do you make a million dollars in motor racing? Start with 10 million. Motor racing is very expensive, is the point, and it turns out sim racing equipment manufacturer Vasaro has created a sim racing rig that is such a realistic recreation of the racing experience, it even recreates the imminent threat of bankruptcy. Retailing at an eye-watering £118,000, or $150,000, Vasaro's top-of-the-line Formula V100 Full Car Stage 3 builds already quite expensive sim racing equipment into a full, one-to-one -one sized formula car that you can plonk in your living room and then clamber awkwardly into for the most authentic F1 experience possible. Wearing a helmet in there is optional, but you know what they say? In for a penny, in for £118,000. To add further authenticity, the Stage 3 version includes three 65-inch screens to give you a wraparound view of the racetrack, and the entire thing is even mounted on a motion platform that reacts to the action occurring in the racing game. 
ensuring that if you slam your virtual car into a wall, you'll probably realistically smash your shins on the inside of the cockpit as well. So maybe add another 10,000 for medical bills and painkillers. This is, of course, the most unnecessarily opulent way to go sim racing, and Vasara themselves do have more sensibly priced sim racing rigs, but it is worth pointing out that, rather than buying the Formula V100 full car stage 3, in some cases it would be cheaper to buy an actual working Formula car and go racing for real. Oh, and if you're wondering, uh, while Vasaro does look like it might be Latin, actually the closest word in Latin is Vasano, which is a form of the word Vasanus, which means mad or insane. I'm not saying it's a hidden reference to the price tag, but I'm also not not saying that. It was originally built to, uh, for programmers, so uh, we took the different components from the off, integrated it into one machine. It has become an elaborate workstation and gaming station. What does your desk at work look like? Maybe a computer? Keyboard, maybe some far side cartoons taped up to lighten the mood. I don't get it. If you're after something a little more ridiculously overdesigned and expensive, however, then may we recommend the Emperor 200 workstation from MWE Lab, a fancy workstation slash gaming rig that looks like something you would strap yourself into to pilot the Nebuchadnezzar in a Matrix film. And also you have a feature where the entire machine can tilt backwards, so you can change your working position from upright to leaning back this way. Built around an ergonomic leather seat, this gargantuan gaming chair features three 24-inch monitors, a work surface for a keyboard and mouse, built-in LED lighting both above and below the seating area, and a THX surround sound system. It also includes an air filtration system, and the whole thing is motorized with touchscreen adjustment controls, meaning you can switch up your various angles and heights without having to get out of the chair. In fact, the only time you're probably ever going to have to get out of your chair is to answer the door to your furious bank manager, because this thing costs almost $45,000. And it doesn't make you any better at Call of Duty. Unless it does, in which case I'll Venmo you right now, MWE Lab. Two thousand and eight was a different time. The Twilight movie saga began, the iPhone was barely a year old, Instagram didn't even exist, and a computer company thought they could get away with charging three quarters of a million dollars for a PC. That company was Zeus, which debuted its Jupiter PC in 2008 for a whopping $750,000. That hefty price tag was down to the fact that the case was made of solid platinum and studded with diamonds that were arranged in the shape of astrological constellations. For all its precious materials and whopping cost, the actual PC inside this thing was pretty underwhelming, containing a for the time unimpressive 3 GHz CPU and an entry-level Nvidia graphics card. Ironically, $750,000 is about what a good graphics card costs these days. Isn't it amazing how far we've come? Have you ever been playing a game on your PC, clicking away on your mouse and keyboard, and wondered if you'd do better with a keyboard that was enormously expensive and also looked like the sort of thing that Davy Jones might be using on the Flying Dutchman in the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie? Well, good news, person with extremely specific tastes and lots of disposable income, because have we got just the keyboard for you? From Datamancer, a company that specialises in making antique-looking steampunk computer accessories, such as a telegraph mouse and a brass-trimmed monitor, comes the Seafarer keyboard, described as an intensely ornate, nautically-themed keyboard with a worn-in, weather-beaten aesthetic and cast brass components. Featuring typewriter-style keycaps with an ornate gothic font, underneath the keys lies a gold foil map print from 17th century cartographer Peter Schenk the Elder, as well as a spiral pattern along the top and bottom rods and green jewel indicators in the top right of the keyboard. Of course you can get a regular keyboard for about $20, but what price aesthetics? What price history? What price a sense of adventure? Oh. $1,299.50 apparently, because this thing costs basically 1300 bucks. That's what price those things. When you do finally win the lottery, you'll want to stop wasting your time with screens under 160 inches in size. 
To that end, take a moment right now to bookmark the 160-inch curved screen created in 2017 by Swedish company Norman Design. Designed to give you a huge wraparound 175-degree field of view, this gargantuan curved display doesn't use anything as vulgar as a conventional OLED display. Instead, it has an array of special rear-mounted projectors operated by the special software that comes bundled on the PC that is itself also bundled with this screen, all for the princely sum of $28,570. In fact, since you'll be a multi-millionaire at this point, you may as well go all in and buy the premium package from Norman Design that costs $114,000 and includes a Formula One simulator setup to make the most of your 13-foot long mega screen. You can park it next to your 150 grand Vizarro F1 simulator in your simulator garage. If you are already a multi-millionaire, by the way, I am available for wealth management services. Do call me. Thank you so much for watching this video about the most ludicrously expensive gaming accessories available. Uh, but you know what doesn't cost a dime? Uh, watching another one of our videos or a video from our sister channel Outside Extra. So we've got up here a video about games that punished you for being too good at the game. What the heck? And down here, we've got a video about surprise boss fights that just came out of the blue. Enjoy those and thank you for watching.